Hello to everyone and welcome. In this lecture of properties of natural gas 2, we will understand some more properties of natural gas and how to estimate those. So, let us quickly revise what we had learned in the last lecture. So, natural gas is a complex mixture. The composition depends on field and reservoir vary from light hydrocarbon from C 1 up to C 7 uh, along with non hydrocarbon gases like C O 2, N 2, S 2 S, trace amount of S O 2 and others and some are the sore gases those need to be treated before we are sending it to consumer. So, from the production side to consumer the composition varies because of the field conditions because of the several processes apply to refine the natural gas and the composition of the natural gas can be estimated by the analytical techniques. One of the analytical technique is gas chromatography. So, if the compositions are known, we can estimate several properties at different temperature and pressure condition and these properties estimation can be done with the lab, lab measurements or using the correlation developed in, in the past. Our objective is learning how to know the properties of the natural gas, those are required when we are dealing with the natural gas. There are several properties required at different stages, but we will deal some common properties as we did in the last class and the remaining properties for example, the solubility of a gas in the water will be treated when we are uh, dealing with the dehydration steps and the heat capacity and heat related properties will be understood when we are dealing with cooling the natural gas and heating the natural gas or compressing the natural gas when it is uh, temperature and pressure conditions are changing. All these are required with the designing point of view because from the production to consumer several equipments need to be designed to handle the natural gas and all these designing things require the properties of material to be handled or when it is a flowing system, what are the flow properties of the fluid, those should be known. So, with the aim of this, when the variation in properties happens throughout the process, it is well required to understand how to estimate those properties. So, let us say uh, we are having this production system, half of the part is shown here, where we are having upstream part, where natural gas is being produced from the reservoir to separator. In fact, before the separator is the upstream segment, from separator till processing point it is a midstream and when we are transporting the natural gas it is a downstream segment. So, the reservoir fluid that is gas in our case is being flowed from porous media traveling in the pipeline facing the choke device and then the separator, then several dehydration unit, sweetening processes and finally, the transportation through the pipeline. The properties, the common properties is what are the composition of gas, what is the specific gravity of the gas, what is the viscosity when we are flowing any fluid we need to know the viscosity, what is the compressibility factor of the gas because the gas is not uh, the natural gas is not ideal gas, it is not incompressible gas we need to know and the other properties like formation and expansion factor those relate the amount of the natural gas from one condition to other conditions must be known how to establish the correlation for this. And in the bottom part I had shown here like different properties estimation needs some detail uh, that is need to be known before we can estimate for example, if you want to know the density we need to know the compressibility factor. Knowing the compressibility factor itself is a is a cumbersome job, but knowing the density need compressibility factor and that is why the knowing the density of a natural gas becomes a like very tedious job. We discuss all these things in the last class. So, let us uh, go quickly. So, pseudo critical properties because most of the correlation given in the literature or given in the reference book, textbook, those are laboratory measurement observation and have been put up in the form of the chart. And those chart cannot be read by the computer, it is very difficult to, to quickly measure the properties. That is why the correlation have been developed several uh, by several researchers. And you will be had seen in the last lecture also, the correlation for example, the pseudo critical and pseudo 
uh, pressure uh, measurement from this chart depends on several other factor and those are very tedious. We had seen the linear relationship between the gamma g specific gravity and the critical properties, quadratic form are there, more complex form are there as well as not only uh, specific gravity those depends on the impurities present in the system. So, if we know composition of the gas thoroughly we can calculate by the critical properties by the mixing rule otherwise we need to know some of the properties of the natural gas we are dealing like the specific gravity gamma z and uh, CO2 N2 and S2, uh, S2S. So, in this chart we can see like if we know the gas gravity we are having we can measure the pseudo critical temperature and pseudo critical pressure of that gas. Of course, that will need to be corrected for presence of N2, CO2 and S2S and if we know that thing we can estimate the critical properties and knowing the critical properties is very important because with the help of critical properties we can read several chart with the help of critical properties we can convert them uh, to reduce properties like reduced temperature, pseudo reduced temperature, pseudo reduced pressure and some other chart those are given in the form of pseudo reduced pressure and pseudo reduced temperature can be made readable. So, let us quickly what we learned in the last class uh, gas specific gravity that is the ratio of mol apparent molecular weight of the natural gas divided by the molecular weight of air. We can calculate mo apparent molecular weight by chain rule. Similarly, chain rule can be applied to calculate the critical properties of the mixture or when gamma z is given specific gravity, gravity is given we can use some correlation either the quadratic form or the linear form to establish the critical properties and then those can be converted into reduced pressure, pseudo reduced pressure and pseudo reduced temperature. So, now let us go ahead in this lecture we are going to understand the viscosity or some other properties. So, let us start with the viscosity of natural gas. As we know natural gas is not a pure component gas. If it is purely methane we can use several simple correlation existing uh, in the literature or chart those can allow us to understand the viscosity of natural gas if it is very pure methane gas. When it is a mixture problem becomes little complex. This chart shows uh, the viscosity value in a centipoise for a different gases at a one atmospheric pressure. It is reported by Carr et al. in 1954. Viscosity depends on temperature as well as on a pressure because this chart is given only for one atmospheric condition. If the pressure is changing this chart need to be replaced by another chart and it is simply saying when we are having the temperature variation the viscosity is also changing. So, the viscosity of any fluid is, is a measure of resistance to flow. So, whenever we are having a fluid to flow we need to understand the viscosity of that fluid. In our case our fluid is gas. So, the viscosity of a gas is a measure of the resistance to flow exerted by the gas and it is measured in centipoise and centipoise is equal to 6.72 10 to the power minus 4 lbm per feet second. It can be measured in some other unit also like Pascal second. The dynamic viscosity can be converted to another property that is the uh, kinematic viscosity and that is the ratio of dynamic viscosity to gravity of the gas and the unit for the kinematic viscosity is Santi stock. Important part is the properties of natural gas can be established with some other correlation or can be established this with the help of the fundamental theory. Natural gas is not a pure uh, gas it is a mixture. So, the theory kinetic theory cannot be directly applied yes individual component of the natural gas the viscosity can be established with the help of some kinetic theory. We are not going in detail of the kinetic theory of the gases or some other complex correlation given what is our objective is if we know our natural gas what are the composition of natural gas and we want to know the viscosity the properties of a natural gas that is very much responsible for its flow behavior 
if you want to know that property at different condition, we have to have some strategy, some correlation, some chart, some fundamental understanding to estimate that thing. So, dynamic viscosity is reported in centipoise, while kinetic viscosity is in centi stock. So, remember this unit because whenever the data are given, you need to convert from one unit to other unit. So, it is very important in what unit the values are given. Most of the chart as I mentioned are given with respect to a uh, field unit system that is centipoise for this uh, dynamic viscosity and centipoise is also equivalent to uh, like CGS unit system. Gas viscosity as I mentioned, if I know my gas, if I know composition, if I know their mole fraction, viscosity of individual component in the gas by applying again the mixing rule, I can estimate the viscosity of the gas. So, to apply this formula mu z the viscosity of the gas, I need to know the individual component I viscosity, its mole fraction and its molecular weight. And using this expression for all component, it should be I is equal to 1 to n, this should also be I is equal to 1 to n, we can get the viscosity of the mixture. This is a common rule for any type of the gas mixture. So, if we go further, uh, if we are not knowing the composition of the natural gas, if we do not know the properties of individual component at, temp at the temperature and pressure, we want to know the viscosity of the mixture, we have to go to literature, we have to find out some correlation, some, some already existing chart, those can, so those can help us at the elevated temperature and pressure condition or any temperature reference, any temperature and pressure condition we want to know. So, Lee et al, they had given one sort of expression or correlation to estimate the viscosity of the gas and that expression include the molecular weight of the gas and density of the gas and others are like temperature and pressure we want to know. In this expression you will see the pressure is not appearing, but later on we will see in one of the uh, slide, we will see the density gamma z depends on composition, it depends on temperature as well as pressure. So, pressure is here implicitly in the form of the density. Uh, so, the viscosity of natural gas will vary with temperature and pressure using this correlation proposed by Lee et al, we can estimate. So, either if we are having the composition known, molecular weight known, we can use this mixing rule just to have an estimated property, but again to know this, we have to know the viscosity of individual component at the temperature and pressure of interest and this M W g is the apparent molecular weight of the natural gas that is equivalent to this expression 28.97 gamma g, 28.967 is the molecular weight of air. So, if we know the gamma z, we can calculate m w z, put in this expression, we can get the viscosity. Again remember the numerical coefficient appearing here depend on the unit system has been chosen with the help with the expression proposed by Lee et al, we can get the viscosity of the natural gas in centipoise, rho g should be in the form of gram per centimeter cube. So, that is why remember this unit system is very important accordingly the coefficient will get changed, pressure is in PSI temperature in degree ranking system. So, if we see further is this correlation good enough? how accurately one particular method will give us. So, the Lee et al method which we just discussed is considered good enough to, to um, is accurate enough to have the viscosity of natural gas. There are some other methods proposed and very famous and those methods are frequently used in the natural gas industry to estimate the viscosity of natural gas. One of them is developed by Carr, Kobayashi and Burroughs. This is called CKB method developed in 1954. This involved two step processes. If we see the chart here, here it is reported if we know the molecular weight of the gas, natural gas and we know the gas gravity that can be calculated just by knowing the molecular weight, we can know the gas gravity. So, the viscosity at 1 centipoise, viscosity at 1 atmosphere, atmospheric pressure and the unit of centipoise can be estimated with the help of this chart, but this chart is for at one atmospheric condition only, but with the help of this we can get a different temperature. How viscosity is changing with respect to temperature at one atmospheric pressure. Once knowing this, we can correct again for the impurities, those are CO2, N2 and H2S, 
impurities in the system. After knowing this uh, the value of the viscosity from this chart, first step is complete that says I know the viscosity of the natural gas at one atmospheric condition and at the temperature of interest. Now, we want to know the viscosity at elevated pressure that is the temperature whatever we have or um, what the temperature of the interest that we had uh, calculated the viscosity with the help of chart 1 this one. Now, we can calculate the viscosity ratio and that viscosity ratio will be related to reduce temperature this is reduced temperature and this is reduced pressure. So, if we know critical temperature and critical pressure of the gas we can convert them into reduced temperature and reduced pressure using those reduced temperature pseudo reduced temperature and pseudo reduced pressure we can read this chart and can calculate the viscosity ratio at that elevated condition means elevated condition means the condition uh, of pressure of interest. So, with the help of chart 1 we could estimate at one atmospheric condition and interest temperature with the help of chart 2 we can convert that into uh, the temperature of interest as well as the pressure of interest. And this two step procedure can give us the viscosity at the condition we want. So, how to use this chart? Let us understand uh, the mathematical relationship given to, to read this chart that simply says the atmospheric uh, pressure viscosity mu 1 can be estimated just combining this factor. This factor simply represent viscosity contribution because of the hydrocarbon gas presence, because of nitrogen, because of CO 2 and because of H 2 S and all are at atmospheric condition and UHC this one for the hydrocarbon just simply include gamma z gamma z means the specific gravity of the natural gas and the temperature of interest. With the help of that we can get the hydrocarbon viscosity, the viscosity of the hydrocarbon present in the natural gas or the viscosity fraction of natural gas because of hydrocarbon. Similar for the nitrogen case we are having the relationship where gamma g is again used and corrected this value with the help of nitrogen mole fraction. So, this is kind of a correction in the value because of nitrogen presence. Similar corrections can be made for CO2 and H 2 S. The numerical coefficient appearing in all these equations are obtained by fitting the data fitting different curves or different values to the curves shown in the previous slides. So, now this two step procedure can give us viscosity at atmospheric pressure and then in the next step the value of viscosity can be adjusted to pressure condition we want. Now, how to read the second chart first step we had done in the previous slide we said the mu 1 the viscosity at atmospheric pressure can be estimated with the help of these numerical expressions instead of reading the chart. Uh, another is for the viscosity ratio or it is called the mu r a parameter that relate the viscosity of the natural gas at the interest conditions like at a particular temperature and pressure we want and this is mu 1 viscosity of natural gas at one atmospheric condition and the temperature of interest. And this expression simply says and it is actually the representation of the second chart that we had discussed in CKB method here that says mu r can be related to reduce pressure pseudo reduced pressure and pseudo reduced temperature in this complex form where you are having one set of the data of the reduced pressure in a in a polynomial of third order then second set of the data for the pressure in the polynomial of third order multiplied by the temperature similar here in up to t 3 p r we are having this complex and if the model is fit we got different values for this constant those are appearing here up to C 15. So, from A 0 to A 15 sorry A 15 we are having this numerical coefficient. So, what we can do we can write a mathematical model either in the excel or in a matlab or any platform where we can include all these numerical coefficient can develop the uh, relation for mu r using this mu r and previously developed relation for the hydrocarbon uh, viscosity 
and the correction because of N 2 CO 2 and S 2 S we can estimate the viscosity at the point of interest or at the condition of interest. Let us see how this can be done. So, once this mu r is known and mu 1 from 2 slides back we can get this mu g. Let us understand this with the help of an example that example says like a natural means natural gas with a particular specific gravity 0.65 containing 10 percent nitrogen, 8 percent carbon dioxide and 2 percent hydrogen. So, the compositions are known, the hydrocarbon compositions are known in the form of gamma g, while the impurities nitrogen, CO 2 and S T S are known in terms of the mole fraction given to us. And it is asked to estimate the viscosity of the gas at particular temperature and pressure. In this case, it is 10,000 psi is a pressure and 180 degree Fahrenheit is the temperature. So, we need to convert this 180 degree Fahrenheit into ranking. So, what we can do? We can apply the method that is asked to be applied C K V method that is a two step procedure. In first step procedure, uh, we can get the viscosity at the atmospheric uh, pressure condition. So, let us see what is given to us similar whatever uh, written here you can develop your own program where you can estimate very quickly the value of the viscosity just by knowing the information. For example, what are the composition of the natural gas, what are the impurities present in the natural gas and what particular temperature and pressure we are supposed to calculate the viscosity. So, instead of uh, going again and again on those expression, you can write a mathematical program in excel sheet. For that, I am showing just few steps that says what is given to us or should be known to us to calculate the viscosity of natural gas. Of course, the temperature and pressure at uh, that condition we want to know the viscosity. So, that is given 10,000 psi 180 Fahrenheit and the gravity 0.65 and the composition the mole fraction are given to us. What we can do? We can calculate with the help of the uh, correlation we understood previously how to calculate the pseudo critical pressure, pseudo critical temperature. If we know this, we can calculate the gas viscosity at one atmospheric pressure that is 14.7 psia. We got this, we can use those uh, correction for the nitrogen, correction for CO2, correction for S2S. So, here the expression is written, we just entering the data and getting this correction because of impurities present. And once we add all these four, what we get? The viscosity of the natural gas because of hydrocarbon, nitrogen, CO2 and H2S at one atmospheric pressure and the temperature of interest that is 180 F. Now, we need to convert this viscosity to the condition of interest that is 10,000 psi in 180 F. So, what we can do? We can again use that big correlation and to use that correlation we need to know this uh, reduced temperature, pseudo reduced temperature and pseudo reduced pressure. We can calculate if we are knowing the pseudo critical temperature and pseudo critical pressure. If we can, if once we are knowing this thing, we can use that big correlation to get this value of mu r. So, this is actually uh, the value of mu r. No, the value of mu r we can get and if once we know the value of mu r in this expression, this is kind of a ratio relationship, we can get the gas viscosity and that gas viscosity we will obtain in the unit of centipoise. So, I think it is clear how to calculate the viscosity using the C K B method. Um, we understood the Lee et al method and the C K B method, any one of the method can be modeled just to have the quick estimation of the quick and accurate estimation of the viscosity while knowing the information required to apply those correlations. Another important properties is compressibility factor. So, the compressibility factor is the property of a natural gas that shows how much deviation natural gas is having from the ideal gas. So, if we assume ideal gas law, how much deviation in the properties or in the quantity we are going to measure with the help of this uh, ideal gas law, how much deviation we will obtain will be represented by this compressibility factors. So, in very short term, compressibility factor reflects how much the real gas deviate from the ideal gas 
at given temperature and pressure. So, compressibility factor depend on temperature and pressure. As the temperature and pressure conditions are changing, compressibility factor will also change. Compressibility of course, depend on the composition of the natural gas also. So, by mathematical expression, it is a ratio of V actual volume of the gas occupied divided by if the gas is considered as ideal gas, how much volume the same amount of the gas will occupy that is the compressibility factor. So, the compressibility factor says the gas law for ideal gas result in the gas law for real gas. So, this is measure of how much deviation are happening or if we assume the natural gas as an ideal gas, how much deviation or how much uh, error we will get. Uh, error means how much deviation we will get in the real field or in the real data. The expression can be modified, the ideal gas law can be modified as a P V is equal to N Z R T, where Z is the compressibility factor. Uh, this information can be this the value of compressibility factor can be measured in the laboratory, but every time like for example, in the case of natural gas if any one property is changing like the natural gas composition are changing, any temperature and pressure condition is changing the value will get change. So, it is important to develop some, some chart or some correlation uh, those are depend only on the properties of the natural gas means the composition of the natural gas and with the knowing the composition of the natural gas or the gas we are dealing, we can estimate very easily uh, the compressibility factor value at different temperature and pressure conditions. So, for example, at elevated pressure, if you want to calculate the compressibility factor, this is just simply is P 1 V 1 divided by 14.7 V 0 if and only if the temperature is kept constant. So, this relation says if you are having a natural gas at atmospheric condition that is um, that is stored in a volume V 0 and if we compress it or if we elevate the pressure to P 1, the volume is occupied by the, the volume occupied by gas is V 1, then the compressibility is P 1 V 1 divided by 14.7 V 0. So, in this kind of the relationship, we can, we can estimate the a compressibility factor value at a particular pressure knowing the volume occupied by the gas. And in all this relation, we also need to know the value of R. For example, if you are applying this, R is a um, gas constant, the numerical value is 10.73 uh, PSIF fit cube per mole degree ranking and the numerical coefficient will get changed when we are using a different unit system. For example, 8.314 when we are having the SI unit system. The standard pressure is uh, 14.7 and the standard temperature is 520 degree ranking. And these values should be should be known always because whenever we are converting uh, properties from one condition to other condition and if the other condition is the standard condition, we need to apply this numerical value for the standard pressure and the standard temperature to convert the expression. And the R value of course, in most of the cases we are going to use 10.73 because it is a field US field unit system and most of the reservoir system deals with the US field unit system. But whenever needed, we have to convert this value into the unit system of interest. So, let us go back to compressibility factor, this chart we had seen in the last lecture also. So, if we know reduce pressure and reduce temperature that is here reduced temperature and this is reduced pressure of the natural gas, we can calculate the compressibility of the natural gas. Instead of reading this complex chart, we can use some correlation, very complex correlation proposed in the literature, one of them is Brill and Bags that simply says the compressibility of the natural gas Z can be estimated with the help of this correlation and that is include A, B, C, D type of the uh, parameters. Those A, B, C, D are defined in the form of pseudo reduced temperature and pseudo reduced pressure. So, if we know the pseudo reduced temperature and pseudo reduced pressure of the natural gas we have, we can calculate the value of compressibility factor at the pressure and temperature of interest with the help of this correlation. Here in, in uh, like D, we are having 
this f, so f is defined here and similarly, we can write mathematical expression for this system also to quickly estimate the value of compressibility factor. So, for a Brill and Bregs also one excel sheet code or any platform code can be can be written and that should be done actually to reduce the time consumption every time we are going to deal with the similar system. So, for example, if just viscosity need to be estimated at T 1 P 1 condition, we can do the calculation when we are going to have another condition just uh, even a small deviation like T 2 uh, P 2, we have to do again each steps. So, it is better to write mathematical code or uh, uh, it is better to write uh, the code in the excel sheet or in a MATLAB. So, this standing cats methods or uh, sorry this standing in cats chart read by the Brill and Bax in 1974 and we got one mathematical expression to calculate the compressibility factor. Another method is there, but before going to that let us understand how this methods Brill and Bax going to work. We are having almost same composition as in the previous uh, example. In fact, the same composition just only the pressure value got changed. Now, we want to know the viscosity sorry the compressibility factor of a natural gas as 5000 psia. So, what is given to us estimate the compressibility factor at 5000 psi temperature is 180 F viscosity uh, means gravity is given as 0.65 the composition of the impurities are also given to us. So, what we can do just let us calculate critical temperature and critical pressure with the help of those values and knowing the interest temperature interest pressure we can convert them into reduced pressure and reduced temperature. Now, we know all these things those are required to calculate the coefficient appearing here a b c d. We can write for a b c d and put in the in this expression we can get the gas compressibility again in the unit of centipoise. Another method for compressibility factor is Hall and Yarvorog known as H y method. It is more accurate correlation and that simply says calculate a parameter as 1 upon T p r and if we know that we can also calculate similar for the pressure pseudo reduced pressure. This is pseudo reduced temperature and this is pseudo reduced pressure of the natural gas of interest multiply this with some coefficient a and divide by another coefficient y, we can get the compressibility. So, what is those, what are those a and y? Let us see, a simply says if this correlation t is equal to 1 upon t p r can be used here in this form and we can get the value of a. All these are like uh, model fitting approach for the experimental data or for the chart, they appear very complex. That is why it is very important to set up some mathematical framework to calculate this value very easily. Similarly, B can be calculated, C can be calculated and D can, D can be calculated. Then when we need B, C, D, another expression is there for the by known as reduced density and that parameter has a numerical value that satisfy this condition. So, in this condition you can say here it is A, B, C and D are appearing and those A, B, C, D are in the form of reduced temperature because T small t is just 1 upon pseudo reduced temperature. So, if we know pseudo reduced temperature, we can calculate A, B, C, D and knowing A, B, C, D in this equation, we can get a fourth order polynomial equation with respect to y and we can solve this or we can just optimize the value of y that satisfy this equation that can be done with the help of Newton Raphson iteration method or goal seek method or trial and error analysis. We can calculate the value of y that is going to satisfy this condition and once we know y and a value, we can use this expression to get the compressibility factor at temperature and pressure of interest. Let us see if we are having the same example as in the previous slide, we can calculate the compressibility factor by using this H y method 
at the temperature and pressure of interest that is 5000 psi pressure and 180 F temperature. The viscosity if this is changing 0 0.71 what we are going to get we are not going to have much effect here in this calculation. What you remember the critical temperature and critical pressure are the function of gamma g. So, when gamma g value is changing our pseudo critical temperature and pseudo critical pressure value will change. Knowing those value using this value given to us temperature and pressure we can calculate the pseudo reduced temperature and pressure. Those pseudo reduced temperature and pressure can put up here knowing other parameter we can get the value of compressibility factor. So, this is just similar manner it is written. So, the values are different than the previous example and the reduced temperature reduced pressure also different and assuming value of y solving for this expression we can get the compressibility factor of the natural gas that is 0.977 centipoise is appearing. So, it looks very simple, but we need to have some optimization technique especially for this value of y to solve this complex equation that can be done with the help of Newton Raston method. So, now we know how to estimate the viscosity and compressibility factor of a natural gas at point of interest, point of interest means the condition uh, temperature and pressure of interest. Now, let us move to the next property that is gas density. Uh, natural gas is compressible that is density depend on the temperature and pressure it is not constant. We know by the definition of density for any uh, fluid this is mass divided by volume and for the natural gas case we can say the mass divided by volume can be converted to this system. Just by having mass is equal to or we know moles is equal to mass divided by molecular weight and we know volume is equal to by real gas law Z Z n R T by P. If we put both of them here, we will get this expression that says density can be related to the apparent molecular weight of the natural gas and the condition of interest like pressure, temperature or is gas constant that is 10.73 in the US field unit system. Now, you see here the compressibility is appearing that compressibility is a function of temperature and pressure. So, if you want to know the density first we need to know the compressibility factor of the natural gas at that temperature and pressure R is ok T is in absolute term like uh, degree ranking. We can further modify this expression to achieve this and that can be done with the help of the non parameter like gamma z we know it is mo apparent molecular weight of the gas divided by 28.97 R value is 10.73. If we put both of them here we are going to get this expression of gas density that simply says gas density of natural gas depends on pressure, temperature, compressibility factor as well as composition and those composition can be represented in the form of specific gravity gamma g and the value comes out as 2.7 gamma z p by z t. So, density is inversely proportional to temperature and directly proportional to pressure, but again this compressibility factor that also depends on temperature and pressure that will have effect on the density calculation. Now, we know density, viscosity and compressibility factor. Let us know some more properties of natural gas those are important not be, not to have uh, dealing with the natural gas, but to knowing the value of value or some of the parameter of natural gas in some standard conditions. One of them is formation volume factor when we will be dealing about how the natural gas is being produced from the uh, reservoir to well bore the relationship called is I P R and in that I P R we can relate the flow rate or other parameter of the natural gas with some non conditions and that can be done that can also be done with the help of formation volume factor that is the ratio of gas volume at reservoir condition to gas volume at standard condition. So, when we are having a fluid in the reservoir domain it is occupy it is occupying some of the volume of pore volume of the reservoir 
and instead of knowing the porosity and pore volume of that reservoir, we can convert those value to some standard condition and our standard condition is one atmospheric pressure and absolute temperature that is 520 degree ranking. Gas volume formation factor B z, sometimes it is represented as B, this is the ratio of actual volume under the reservoir condition divided by the volume uh, of the same amount of the gas at a standard condition. We can convert this volume under standard condition with the help of uh, the relationship is P 1, V 1 is divided by uh, Z 1 T 1 is equal to P 2 V 2 by Z 2 T 2. So, representing the same amount of the natural gas at one set of the condition of two another set of the condition that is one and two similar we can do with the reservoir condition to uh, standard condition. We know the value of a standard condition compressibility factor of the natural gas at a standard condition is always assumed as one and knowing this we will get the expression for formation volume factor that appears at 0 0.0283 jet T by P. Remember jet T by P. Uh, so, it is proportional to temperature inversely proportional to pressure and the numerical coefficient again depends on the unit system has been chosen to put this PSC, TSC value and these values and the numerical value appearing here is when the volume formation factor is shown in reservoir fit Q per standard cubic feet. Uh, if the same is expressed in RB, RB stand for reservoir barrel per standard cubic feet, we will get this expression where the numerical value uh, will be 0 0.00504 multiplied by the parameter Z t upon p. So, this formation volume factor becomes very important, uh, we will see in the uh, later on like how to relate reservoir condition to standard condition. Uh, the reverse of uh, volume formation factor is known as expansion factor. It is normally used for estimating gas reserve, how much gas reserve is available and express as a reverse of a formation volume factor. The numerical coefficient comes out as 35.3 uh, because of the unit system is chosen, the volume is represented in fit Q. If we convert this into SCF per uh, reservoir barrel, the numerical value will get change and we get the expansion factor E is equal to 198.32 uh, P by Z T. These properties will be uh, helpful like uh, B and E property will be helpful relate one condition to other condition, the other condition is always the standard condition. So, another important property of natural gas is compressibility of natural gas. It is not incompressible, it is compressible gas. So, the compressibility of a gas is defined at a condition like uh, represented by C g, sometimes C, sometimes C t. So, this is a th also known as thermal compressibility of gas that says the compressibility of a natural gas is the ratio of change in volume with respect to pressure at constant temperature divided by the volume of the gas. So, negative signs comes because once we comp once we increase the pressure volume decreases. So, minus 1 by V uh, dou V by dou P at a constant temperature. So, this is by the mathematical definition uh, the compressibility can be expressed. And for the real gas law, we know how to replace the volume and if we take the derivative of this, what we can get? Dou V is equal to N Z R, we have assumed T is constant because under isothermal condition this will become minus p square dou p plus n constant r constant t constant p is taken out this will be dou z by dou p. So, if we adjust this here putting the value of this putting the value of this dou p or dou v what we are going to get this expression we can put it here and we will get the expression for uh, thermal compressibility of natural gas and that C is equal to 1 by P minus 1 by Z dou Z by dou P. 
with knowing the pressure, knowing the compressibility and how compressibility is going to change with pressure, we can get the compressibility of natural gas or thermal compressibility of the natural gas or other mean if we know the thermal compressibility of the natural gas, knowing the pressure and, and the compressibility factor z, we can understand the change in compressibility with the pressures. The slope of this linear equation in, uh, in the form of the linear parameter will tell us the slope or the change in compressibility with respect to pressure. We can also calculate the compressibility of the ideal gas uh, with the same sort of definition and it comes out as ideal gas compressibility is not a function of anything, compressibility does not appear in the ideal gas law, this term will become 0. So, the compre thermal compressibility of natural gas is 1 by p. So, let us summarize uh, gas specific gravity, we know how to calculate apparent molecular weight, pseudo critical pressure, pseudo critical temperature when the compositions are given, when composition are not given gamma g is, uh, is given, we can still calculate with the correlation, linear correlation, quadratic correlation, correction for the impurities, we can get uh, the critical properties, using those critical properties we can get the pseudo reduced properties of the natural gas and viscosity can be uh, the mathematical expression could be established for the viscosity measurement. One of the method is CKV method. Similarly, for gas compressibility, the, uh, two, three method we had discussed like Brill and Beck's and HY method, those can be used. Gas density can be estimated if the compositions are not or the gamma g is known to us. Formation volume factor and expansion factor can be estimated with the help of these expressions and gas compressibility and all these will be useful when we are dealing how the natural gas is being treated at different stages from the production zone within the reservoir, within the porous media in the reservoir to supply when we are sending to consumer at the end when the consumer is using this natural gas, all these properties will be used. Some other properties of natural gas, those directly does not uh, characterize the natural gas, but knowing those calculation, how to calculate those properties or those parameter characterize a combination of the properties of natural gas. For example, real gas pseudo pressure, it is one way of showing how the compressibility factor, how the viscosity of natural gas altogether will change when we, we are changing the pressure condition from one point to other condition. So, by knowing all these things, what we can get? We can get volumetric determination of gas in place. So, let us see the application of the properties we just learned, how they are going to help us. One of the application is volumetric determination of gas in place. So, now another parameter that is more often appears in dealing with flow system, the Reynolds number for natural gas depends not only on the composition of the natural gas, but also at what temperature and pressure the Reynolds number needs to be calculated to understand the flow regime in a pipeline. In the next lecture, what we are going to understand is the parameter on the reservoir side. So, so far what we understood is fluid, but in the production side when we talk about the production from the reservoir domain, it is not only the fluid properties, but also the reservoir properties, those are responsible for the production. We will try to understand some of the properties, those are related to natural gas production system. Thank you, thank you very much for listening the video.